indications the Steelers have lost three in a row and T.J. Watt and this defense getting ready to put an end to the skid. They just know that this town expects more. On the other side, Jake Browning hoping for his fairy tale to continue back here in Pittsburgh at Akershire Stadium after winning the last three games. Glad to have you along for the ride at Akershire. Noah Eagle, former Steeler quarterback Todd Blackledge, Catherine Tappen, and Terry McCauley with us as well. We look at this one. It's an interesting game for a yep. variety of reasons. Chippy in this division anyway, but it's also the year of the back up quarterback yes. and we're going to see two of them today Mike Tomlin told us we can't leave any bullets in the chamber so he's inserting Mason Rudolph under center yeah Mason Rudolph will be the 58th different starting quarterback in the NFL when he takes the field today but he's not unfamiliar to the Steelers he's been in the program six years he's actually started 10 games but none since week 10 of 2021 his style is aggressive he likes to push the ball downfield and make no mistake the Steelers right now are looking for any kind of spark on offense they're not accustomed to hearing the noise that we've heard in this town especially this time of year for Cincinnati Jake Browning has been a wonderful story yeah. around the NFL made his first career start a month ago against the Steelers since then sensational football we challenged to replicate that today as they will be without their top four safeties so that means that Patrick Peterson a seven time pro bowler at corner will move to safety and be joined by another veteran Eric Rowe who was just elevated off the practice squad and makes his Steelers debut also making his first appearance in week 16 is Miles Jack who is expected to rotate in and get snaps at linebacker but Noah they do get a break that is pro bowl wide receiver for the Bengals Jamar Chase will miss this game with a shoulder injury yeah KT and Zach Taylor is excited to see what some of his young receivers can do especially Andre Yosivash the rookie out of Princeton six round pick his Bengals currently in the sixth spot in the AFC for Mike Tomlin looking to avoid his first losing season as the head coach of the Steelers seven and seven on the outside looking in after the three game losing streak perfect day for football 54 degrees 51 real field temperature very little wind generally kicking in this stadium especially late in the season can be a challenge but based on what we saw during pregame warm-ups no issues so far Brett Kiesel getting the crowd fired up here at Akershire Stadium the terrible towels are waving Todd you played in the city you know how much it means to this fan base in particular to see winning football especially this time of year in December the last home game for these folks in Pittsburgh it didn't go too well the last two home games hoping they can do their part today outstanding beard maybe a more outstanding jersey 51st anniversary of the immaculate reception today Mason Rudolph first start of the season we'll see what he looks like under center Pitt won the toss but they decided to defer which means Chris Boswell the veteran will send it deep Chase Brown the rookie is going to be back there for Cincinnati and he has really come on of late 5 10 to 11 out of Illinois but he's got major speed his top end speed among the best in the NFL both teams need it Cincinnati looking for their fourth straight after a come from behind win last week Pittsburgh looking to put an end to a three game losing streak and put themselves back in the playoff picture we're underway from Akershire Stadium and it will be a touchback to bring out this Cincinnati offense. Jake Browning, Washington. Joe Mixon, Oklahoma. Drew Sample, Washington. T. Higgins, Clemson. Tyler Boyd, Pitt. Andre Yosivash, Princeton University. Orlando Brown Jr., Oklahoma. Cordell Volson, North Dakota State. Ted Karras, Illinois. Alex Kappa, Lumberjack Iron. Jonah Williams, Alabama. Might be a little bit of a different look than what you're accustomed to seeing with Joe Burrow under center. But Jake Browning, since his first career start a month ago in the matchup with Pittsburgh, has really come into his own the last three weeks as they'll start from the 25 with Mixon in the backfield. Irwin, the motion man, handoff. Mixon really want to establish the run. No running room there. This Pittsburgh defense is ready for that run pass mix. And that's something that Browning has really embraced under center. The numbers speak for themselves for the success, but the confidence we see out of them has really stood out. Yeah, and the coaches did a smart thing because in the first game he played, it was Joe Burrow's offense. Ever since then, they've kind of tweaked it tailored it to some things that he's more comfortable with and part of that is more under center and more play action passing it'll be a second down and 10 Browning told us he's looking out for those two edge rushers they're coming here on the second and long dump it down this is what Cincinnati's done at a high level the screen game with the running backs and Mixon picks up eight they are one of the best screen teams in football now they just take advantage of TJ Watt getting up the field 
They said they'll be very judicious in how much they try to run the screen because the Steelers typically are hard to run screens against. That time on second down, it worked pretty well. And both Mixon and Chase Brown have a great feel as a receiver in the screen game. This time it's going to be Travion Williams. Fifth-year man out of Texas A&M in there on third and one. Play clock under five now for Browning out of the gun. His first pass of the day is a completion for a first down. Perfect delivery as he finds the rookie Yosivash on that first three plays. We, we were expecting to see number 80 in white, and right here, a beautiful route to move the sticks. Well, this is the matchup they want to try to exploit against Levi Wallace, the corner out of Alabama. The best corner right now for the Steelers is Joey Porter Jr., and he's probably going to travel with T. Higgins most of the game. So they really want to try to get Yosebas involved quickly. So a fresh set of downs. <laughs> Browning just always under control. Another screen just dumps it out to the outside as we get set with this Pittsburgh defense. Cam Hayward, the Ohio State. Keanu Benson, Wisconsin. Larry Ogunjobi, Charlotte. T.J. Watt, Wisconsin. Michael Walker, King of the North. Patrick Peterson, LSU. Eric Rowe, Utah. Neil Wallace, Tucson High School. And Eric KT, Eric Rowe brought up from the practice squad this week, as was Miles Jack. We expect to see at linebacker both filling in for a number of injured high performers on this Pittsburgh defense. Second down and 12 now for Cincinnati. Browning dials it up. Dangerous throw, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Tanner Hudson, who's become one of his favorite targets, and Levi Wallace, starting at one of those corner spots, comes up and makes a big play. Well, Levi Wallace made a nice read out of zone defense. Here's Wallace. His eyes are on the quarterback. He's not in man, so he finds the ball, reads the quarterback's eyes, and almost comes away with the interception. When these two teams played in Week 12, it was a costly interception in the red zone that Browning threw to Trenton Thompson. Here's the first third and long opportunity as Pittsburgh defense loves to send those two edges. Third and 12. Screen pass. Sample. The other tight end with good blocking in front, but he won't get there. A landed Roberts with a nice play to go down low and a stop for this Pittsburgh defense on the first offensive possession of the game for Cincinnati. Pretty conservative call on third down and long that time, but again, the Steelers kind of sniffed this one out. Watch Cam, Ham Cam Hayward. He kind of reads the screen, and he's going to head out, and they know that they can make the tackle well short of the first down. Good defense by the Steelers on that third down. First punt of the day for the rookie out of Michigan, Brad Robbins, known for his hang time, not the strongest leg, as he sends back to a fellow rookie, or rather a fellow youngster, I should say, and a fair catch made by Calvin Austin inside the 10. It'll be a long field on a 47-yard punt for this. Icon of the Seas, arriving 2024. NBC's holiday doubleheader is brought to you by Toyota, the official automotive partner of the NFL. Let's go places. By Vioza. Visit Vioza.com to learn more. By Royal Caribbean. Come seek. And by... Walmart. Shop Walmart now for last-minute gifts on their list. Well, it's a season of giving overall, certainly in the NFL as well. Players from both these teams doing their part giving back as Mason Rudolph makes his first start of the season, first start since Week 10 in 2021 when Ben Roethlisberger was out due to COVID. Allen Robinson, the motion man on first down. Pitch it. Najee Harris finds the hole and picks up four as he keeps the legs turning. Maybe an extra yard at the end for this Pittsburgh offense. Mason Rudolph, Oklahoma State. Najee Harris, Alabama. Pat Frymuth, Penn State. Allen Robinson, Penn State. Deontay Johnson, Toledo. George Pickens, Hoover High School. Dan Moore Jr., Texas A&M. Isaac Silmar Lowe, Oregon State. Mason Cole, Michigan. James Daniels, Warren G. Harding High School. Bradley Jones, Georgia. It's an offense that has fewer than 20 points in five straight games and only more than 20 once in their last state. They have struggled mightily through the year, hoping this is the game to turn around. And Rudolph with his first completion. It's Pickens in stride. There he goes. The explosion. Pickens. Goodbye. Touchdown. 86 yards.
career long for Pickens. 86 yard touchdown. And when you're asking for a little bit of a different explosive feel, wow. there it is. Extra point from Boswell. And it's 7 0 Steelers. Well, the Steelers have had such a problem attacking the middle of the field and getting these receivers involved in the middle. This is a beautiful route by Pickens. He sets up the rookie cornerback, and then this burst. I mean, he just ran away from the Bengal defenders. George Pickens has been under fire a little bit this week, taking a lot of criticism. What a way for him to start. What a way for Mason Rudolph to start right out of the gate for the Steelers. Todd, you mentioned it for Rudolph. He had started in the past with his team, yep. but really the only holdovers from the last time he was getting legitimate action were Deontay Johnson and Pat Frymuth in terms of targets. So he said he's, ta he's taking a little time, extra work with guys like Pickens, extra work with guys like Allen Robinson. And for Pickens, it's his first touchdown since week eight yeah. against Jacksonville, the fourth of the season for the second year man out of Georgia. Uh, you just can't ask for a better start. It was a beautiful throw on time. Pickens did a beautiful job with his route setting up DJ Turner and then just that breakaway speed and the Steelers who have had so much difficulty scoring touchdowns. We said that Mason Rudolph yesterday how much of a breath of fresh air would it be to score on the first drive? How about the first play? <laughs> yeah, he chuckled in your face. Yes, it would be second play I should and say. a touchback on the other side second play after the Harris yep. solid start on the ground, but either way that was big time for Mike Tomlin said he wanted to empty the chamber didn't want to leave any bullets in there gets Rudolph in there and now it's time for Jake Browning to respond in the first matchup for him against the Steelers his first career start it was really slow for both offenses he didn't have to play from behind early in that game here's a chance as Joe Burrow eggs him on on the sideline his numbers were pretty decent that first game but third down the Bengals were 0 for 4 in the first half and 2 for 10 for the game and that was the difference Mixon slips one but gets back to the line of scrimmage falls forward for about a half yard when we talked to Zach Taylor yesterday he said we laugh when we watch some of these teams that just think you can line up and run the football at the Steelers he says that's like death just trying to run it consistently we want to throw the football more when we play this team but with a new quarterback, they also want to not put all the pressure on him and stay balanced. So far, a little bit tough to run the ball on this Steeler front. It's a new quarterback, and without superstar receiver Jamar Chase, expecting T. Higgins potentially at the bottom of your screen to step up. Browning was looking that way. Instead, over the middle it goes for a completion as Trent Irwin vacuums it in. Again. When you ran the ball, won the ball against the Steelers, it's tough, particularly if Cam Hayward is healthy. 11 carries, 25 yards, probably got away from it even a little bit more because of the lack of success. But it was a low-scoring game. Both defenses played well. A turnover, a costly interception by Browning in the red zone led to the Steelers taking the lead in the third quarter. Third down and three. Browning. Holding it, lofts it, wide open Higgins across midfield for a big gain for the Bengals. Well, this is a beautiful job by Jake Browning manipulating the pocket. Now watch, Watt's going to get a good rush, but Browning is going to feel it, and Jonah Williams does a nice job of taking Watt inside. Browning maneuvers in the pocket, and then Higgins opens up in the middle of the defense. Good poise and presence in the pocket by Jake Browning. Last year, Jamar Chase missed four straight games. Higgins, in those four games, 26 catches, 371 yards, and two touchdowns. Really stepped up as that number one option once again. Chase Brown, first carry of the game, explodes forward and picks up three. Chase Brown is going to be a, a factor going forward for this Bengal offense. You know, when they played in week 12, he was just coming off of IR, a hamstring injury. All he did was contribute on special teams, was not a part of the offense. And every Steeler coach we talked to yesterday said, this number 30, he, he's, he's a new weapon that they have, and he has great top-end speed involved in the run and the pass game. It was among the first things T.J. Watt brought up to us when we said, hey, what have you seen on tape? Jake Brown, he goes, well, Chase Brown has been as big a factor as all of it. 
as he goes in motion. Second down and six now for Browning. Feeling the pressure, got rid of it. A wobbler, it's caught! What a play! Yossi Vosh comes back to it and reels it in. Yeah, this, this is one that you say should never be a completion because there's tremendous pressure by Loudermilk right in there. And then somehow Yossi Vosh came back far enough, almost looked like he was fielding a punt and got the completion. Tremendous pressure by Loudermilk. Would have expected a better result for the Steeler defense on that one. Browning completing 76% of his passes in his starts this year. He's 7 of 8 to start, make him 8 of 9. Mitchell Wilcox with the catch. And he gets it across the 25-yard line. He's already hit six different receivers. Last week, he hit 11 different targets. It was the most for Cincinnati since 2007 in a game. Yeah, he sees the field well. He prefers progression-type pass routes where he's got a one, two, and three, knows where his outlets are, quickly goes through his reads once he knows what the coverage is, and he's very comfortable operating in that kind of a system. And if you give him a clean pocket, he's accurate enough to pick you apart. Makes him back in there on second and four. Swing it to Tyler Boyd, the local Pittsburgh kid. Extends forward for a first down. Well, this is an RPO, which... They've used both with Joe Burrow and now with Jake Browning. I mean, the run, the line is all blocking run to the right. Everybody's blocking run, and this is just a, kind of a nod and an eye contact with Boyd to throw the football. Nice job out there in front of the play by Yossi Bosch getting a block for Tyler Boyd and a first down for the Bengals. Nice looking drive in response to that touchdown. He brought up the screen success to Zach Taylor. He said, that's great. We've had a lot of success, but a lot of it is matchup based. And Pittsburgh doesn't make it easy on you. Wilcox in motion. Handoff mixing. Keeps the legs turning. And he gets leveled. A big hit right as he crossed the line of scrimmage. And a nice job to make sure he doesn't get any further by Mark Robinson. Well, Mark Robinson, one of the starting inside linebackers today. Played his college ball at Ole Miss, and they are so thin at the inside linebacker position. They lost their two starters, Cole Holcomb and Quan Alexander, to season-ending knee injuries. They've had to kind of patch that position together. Mixon has been the red zone threat in the last couple of weeks. Four touchdowns the last three weeks. Browning dials it up a little bit behind his intended target, Yosivac, and then it falls incomplete. Highsmith laid the boom and jarred it loose. Yeah, this one's on Jake Browning. And if he hits him in stride, he's going to be able to absorb that hit. Highsmith had dropped into coverage that time. He was not rushing the passer, and he was able to fall back and make a play on the ball. I think he's warm. Tenth play of the drive. On third down, you would think Higgins is the go-to guy. He's in the slot to the right, to the top of the formation. Here he is right here, T. Higgins. Browning leaving the pocket on the run. Browning gets rid of it and picked off. Major mistake. It's the veteran Patrick Peterson with the takeaway. Pittsburgh keeps their seven. right there and you can check out all the action between buffalo and la tonight so after the browning interception pittsburgh takes over from their own 20. darnell washington the rookie tight end the motion man one pass one touchdown 86 yards from rudolph second handoff of the day is going to go to harris pushing the pile forward for seven and a half so mason rudolph 11th career start for this Steelers organization. The team is 5-4-1 when he's been under center. As mentioned, the last start was 769 days ago. It was actually a tie against Detroit. So it's one thing to start the game, you move on. But to tie a game and then go 769 days to try to get another victory, yeah. that's got to be painstaking. And Mason was pretty honest with us. As 
Kenny Pickett remains out with the ankle injury that he's been biding his time waiting. It's tough sometimes when you're the number three quarterback as he's two for two now. Robinson extends for another first down to the 40 yard line and Rudolph feels like he's been ready. He's a confident kid. That's he something that Mike Tomlin really likes about the way he brings some energy to this team. Well he played a lot of ball and set a lot of records at Oklahoma State. He's got excellent arm talent and where he's at his best is when he's on his first read. Both of his completions, it's his number one read. The ball's out, it's accurate, and he's given the Steelers a little juice in their passing game. Also a good start so far for Najee Harris, who had his best game of his season in week 12 against this Bengal defense. 99 yards a month ago against Cincinnati. Since then, 41.7 yards per game. First touch for Jalen Warren, spins his way for three. This is a Bengal defense that has had trouble stopping the run. And then they lost their best interior defensive lineman, B.J. Reeder, last week. And that's uh, that's a hard guy to replace for Lou Anarumo and his defense. He's just going to kind of do it by committee today, rotating a lot of guys in there. What has kept this defense alive is the turnovers. They've taken the ball away, but they've given up a lot of big plays, and they've had trouble stopping the run. You see the total yards allowed, 382 point four but 23 takeaways they've been opportunistic including a bunch in the red zone as Pittsburgh just had on the previous possession pitch it Harris falls forward for two more and sets up third and short BJ Hill gets to him there and we'll see what Cincinnati elects to do here as Pittsburgh will make some changes Pittsburgh went with a three tight end formation on that play they had the rookie from Georgia Darnell Washington who's actually as big as an offensive tackle 6'7 260 pounds trying to play a little bully ball on that second down run Firemuth who had his best game of the season against Cincinnati the motion man on third down Rudolph lets it go and it's a lot of space for Jalen Warren turns on the burners and he's deep in Cincinnati territory dragged down by Logan Wilson and now Rudolph three for three with 17 more in the air. Well watch, he's gonna start looking left. And he's gonna know where Jalen Warren is as his outlet. It's not there in his initial read.